My name's Tom Rogers. Cool. And what do you do at DVO? I'm the designer and engineer of most of the dampers and most of the product that we make. Sweet. If I had a 100 pound coil spring with a 3 inch stroke shock, how much force would it take to bottom that coil spring out completely? Well, if it didn't have any preload on it, it would just be 300 pounds. So, okay. if you're going to compress it, easy math like that is just, yeah, for every inch is 100 pounds. So, two inches would be 200 pounds, and three inches would be 300 pounds. Okay. And so, the spring rate on a shock is basically the amount it takes to compress it one inch. Yeah. And yeah, so, yeah. you just multiply that by the amount it's compressing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. If I started at 200 psi in a rear shock and <laughs> compressed it full bottom out, how much pressure would it have at bottom out? Well, depending on the stroke, but probably around 800 PS, right around 800 PSI inside oh, wow. the shock. Yeah. So it's quite a big difference yeah, from yeah. starting to ending. Oh yeah, yeah. With air shocks at the end of the stroke, the pressures are like crazy. If you knew the numbers, yeah, they're up in the thousands of pounds. Oh really? Yeah, depending wow. on the bike and the setting. So. Um, how do you guys decide what oil viscosity to use, and why would you go with a thinner or a thicker oil viscosity? A lot of it's just quality of oil, like the viscosities themselves. We've Through the years, we kind of know what works for different systems, especially rear shocks. So the lighter viscosities, but then it's uh, it depends on the quality of oils and the heat index of the oils. Some have a lower heat index, so they'll fade and they'll wear out faster, or they have different lubricating properties to them. So we're always trying, you know, the new stuff, and we have some of our go-to oils that we like for our service side of things or for our race side of things. What weight but oil do you guys use? We use a three weight. A three weight. Much, yeah. Is there a reason that you decided to go with a three weight versus like a ten or something? Well, it's just the for the settings themselves, it works out best, and for heat. So if we tried to run a ten weight in a rear shock, just because of so much oil is moving through so fast, that the heat would come around a lot quicker and we'd run into like not being able to keep it cool okay. and with that then you lose all your damping and it fades away and it doesn't work it okay. literally like turns to water That's cool. wears parts out really quick because of friction it just so if you can start with a thinner oil viscosity and then get yeah. your settings and, and yeah and do it with rebound yeah a progressive type shim stack with a lighter weight oil where you now you're using a, a mechanical way to slow it down instead of trying to do it with a, like a, the fluid itself okay and that way the oil just it stays more consistent throughout its, its speed or its use on the bike and therefore it'll just last longer and work better for you over the long haul okay and then how much more oil volume is in a reservoir shock versus an inline shock and what does that do having more oil volume uh with the inline shocks they're more uh, shorter travel bikes than that, but it's a, almost, I would say, about half of the oil volume okay. over a piggyback shock, you know, with one with a reservoir. But they're more geared towards the uh, XC racing or all mount type riding. Just where the, yeah, they don't have a lot of performance to them. Like they have maybe a climbing feature or something, but yeah. with the piggyback shocks, there's a lot more technology for descending. Like we can do more stuff to make it good for descending and climbing with a, with a piggyback shock. And with that, we have to slow things down, we create heat and it has to move somewhere. So the lot more oil, it just runs cooler too. Okay, because there's the more oil to absorb stuff. the heat. Yeah, dissipates the heat through all the, like the whole shock itself is kind of like a heat sink. So it's all, that heat is going somewhere. Okay. When the oil heats up, it goes into the materials and then it's cooled from you riding around and things like that. We, even when we do lab tests, we have to put fans on the product to simulate it being ridden. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. Or else you could just melt stuff on the bench. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, yeah, so it's actually, it is the whole unit's a heat sink. Wow. Yeah. And is that why you guys choose like an aluminum chassis on those? Because aluminum sinks really That's, well? That's uh, just more of a, I'd say compromise for weight. Okay. And for the application, we don't need to go crazy heavy with steel or any exotics like that. So, okay. yeah, it's the best material for what we do. Are you a fan of Trunnion mount, like the new Trunnion mount, or like old fashioned DU bushing at the top? <laughs> Can I plead the fifth? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm a fan of the eyelet mounts. Okay. They're, I, I like the, like, you can fit a lot more and a bike with a trunnion mount, like space-wise, it does fit, but it uh, kind of ties the shock to the frame and makes it a structural member, which kind of was a surprise to some of us companies. So. But with that, we've now addressed that and we're looking at 
basically we are part of the chassis now so it's we're just increasing overlap putting a little extra bushing yeah. in the Cause in the there's shock a lot now of side load going on yeah because it's adding to the structure now of the bike where with an eyelet shock it's more isolated from the bike and we don't have to worry about side loads and things like that it's a damper is designed just to work in a direct straight line and then when it gets pressures from the side if you're not ready for it anyways you can get some uh, you know quicker wear and things like that so okay but it's a and we work with giant all last year it's awesome like addition to the bike because yeah. it does make the bike stiffer so if you try to like if you cut their rear link in half you can feel the bike just gets super buttery but when they tie all that together and tie it to the shock it makes for a lot stiffer bike okay. and therefore the rider's just more confident on the bike knows where his, knows where he's going instead of you know noodling down the trail so. sweet yeah. how much do coatings help i know there's a bunch of different coatings in the bike industry how much do coatings help on a rear shock and do you guys use any coatings uh mostly just teflon impregnated stuff but a lot of it's in the materials and the processes of getting tubes smooth in the first place so and that's a lot of it's proprietary in our industry but the majority of the stuff is aluminum and they're doing like a you know the other guys are they do one thing and call it something and but it's it's almost all the same stuff really, really? yeah <laughs> it's, it's just the branding but, kills, right? yeah yeah it's actually impregnated into the material or during the anodized process it's actually in the first skin of like an aluminum tube so it's right it's in the material itself and then it's mating it up with another material say the bushing so that you can lower your friction points between the two surfaces running on each other and that's where the magic happens if you get it right you know you get those two two, two materials working well. good yeah then it's seamless then you again you have better traction it's all about traction so. cool is it harmful to bottom a shock out a few times per ride no not at all it's we expect it okay i think if anything the chassis will probably have a ill effect over time yeah <laughs> because the bikes weren't designed to be rigid but when they do go rigidly for so like a if it's coil bind or the shock itself just bottoming out on the bumper yeah the frame becomes rigid at that point so and it just adds fatigue but yeah a couple times around that means you're doing it right like okay. you're using everything yeah because you want to use your travel yeah. more right. yeah. yeah when we go racing gravity racing you know downhill racing or enduro racing you should be bottoming out a couple times every run okay yeah cool just save a little for the race yeah because <laughs> you bottom out like a lot more in the race from yeah. adrenaline from pushing out. yeah 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 we always leave a little bit at the end there when we're tuning sweet what is the purpose of an ifp or a bladder and when do you decide to use an ifp versus like a bladder system in a rear shock uh basically an ifp and or bladder is uh designed to just separate the oil from the air and you always in a rear shock you always have to have the oil under pressure uh -huh. to keep it consistent so that it actually doesn't uh expand and contract because okay. with any oil there's actually air in it already it's just the molecules are so small so when you put pressure on it it stabilizes the oil so that it works through the shim stacks consistently at any speed and within a certain range of temperature okay so if, on you, that, so. if you didn't have an IFP or bladder and you just had a closed system it, the shock would not it wouldn't even move yeah if you filled it up with oil it would, wouldn't even compress because it's hydro locked because yeah, yeah. when the shaft enters the shock it's basically displacing yeah. the fluid. it would compress but it would go everywhere <laughs> um, <laughs> and then how much when did you decide to use an IFP versus like a bladder uh, with well we were looking at it when we first started DVO was uh, more towards the gravity side of things so we came out with the emerald front fork and then we came out with a shock that was going to be a descender or a downhill race shock and with that we looked at moto technologies and with a lot of motorcycle shocks these bladders because they don't have any breakaway force where if you put an IFP in it it has that Initial static addiction. yeah like what we talked about negative and positive pressure it has that initial breakaway force to it so it takes away the suppleness a little bit okay and the bladder doesn't it's like squeezing the balloons has no resistance at all at the beginning so okay. it was just to make a super plush race shock at okay. the beginning but it works out throughout the field really through all products and does one take more maintenance than the other or um they're about the same we got you know of course there's a little more rubber to a bladder but i think with ours we the ceiling is the same and yeah really you need maintenance for both so okay yeah yeah 
Oh, right on. Yeah, that's super helpful and technical, and I think that was really cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah my pleasure. Yeah, no Appreciate worries. Appreciate it.